So now that the Crimson Days week-long event is over, let's discuss it. Was it fun? Was it successful? Was there room for improvement? Definitely, an argument can be made for any one of those choices. But before we get into the game mode itself, let's discuss something that was intrinsic into the way that it actually played out. So with the update that brought the Crimson Doubles game mode to us, there was also a significant change to the way that special ammo works in the Crucible. So to kind of explain the reasoning behind that, Deej interviewed the senior designer Derek Carroll, and this is what he had to say. So the question was, how will the February update change the special ammo economy in the Crucible? Derek replies, after the update, players will start certain matches without special ammo. Once the match has begun, those green special crates will behave in the same ways you're used to, although you may be looking for them a bit more. Next question was, what motivated the new ammo economy? The PvP team wanted to increase the use of primary weapons, especially at match start. Sniper rifles and shotguns in particular inspire great happiness or sadness depending on which end of the weapon you find yourself. We wanted to somewhat delay that gratification and satisfaction. When asked what game modes would be affected, he replied, All 3v3 playlists will feature the new special ammo behavior. Skirmish, Salvage, Elimination, Trials, and any rotating 3v3 playlists are covered. I will take special care to say that Rumble is not a 3v3 mode and is safe from this change. So although he doesn't explicitly say this, 2v2 modes seem to be affected as well, and definitely Crimson Doubles. When asked why not 6v6 modes, he replied to this. Seriously, there are several reasons to limit this change to the 3v3 modes. First, the larger game types are generally less sensitive to initial conditions, which gives us more freedom to have special weapons going from the beginning. Also, smaller game types like Skirmish are a bit more hardcore, with more weight applied to each player in the match. So we felt that we could try pushing primary weapons for those initial engagements. Conversely, Control is the friendliest place to enter the Crucible. So we wanted to make sure that we don't present new players with a fundamentally different game than what they're used to. So with all of this in mind, what was the actual result? Was there actually more people using primary weapons in the beginnings of matches? Well, in my experience, initially there was. People in Skirmish and Elimination, you could definitely tell they were looking to solely use their primary in the beginnings of their matches. Game modes were being more decided by gun skill rather than the weapon that they chose. A uh, lot less people using snipers to just he headshot people with one hit, or shotguns to rush with. So, in most engagements initially, it was pretty fair. But what quickly ended up happening when Crimson Doubles dropped was people found ways around the system. One thing people would start using was sidearms, because all sidearms have an intrinsic perk in them that initially spawned them with ammo. In addition to that, people were using Icebreaker to generate ammo, since you can't collect ammo with that weapon equipped, but you can use the ammo generation to start your match with ammo without having any way to counter it from the opposing team. So those were the initial concerns that I had, but it quickly became a lot worse. People would initially start matches with sidearms or with icebreaker, and once they got ammo, they would either get killed or they would even kill themselves and then switch to a different weapon while they were dead in order to gain ammo from that. People could literally pick up any ammo from their sidearm or from Icebreaker, never bother with ammo crates, switch to a different favorite weapon that they had, and get free ammo based on the generation that that weapon provided. So, it was a little concerning. It was definitely not what Bungie intended, in my opinion. Bungie wanted to see people use their primaries more, and to have more fair engagements based on gun skill rather than the weapon that they chose for special. What the real result was, was people found ways around that system to get special ammo regardless of the change that occurred. The only thing that they had to sacrifice was to use something really for the first 30 seconds of a match, like a sidearm, to uh, deal with that in order to get ammo from it, and then switch to a weapon once they got happened to get killed. So, with those changes in mind, uh, it was something that needs to get addressed in the future. One thought might be to punish players that switch their special weapon while they're dead. Don't allow them to generate ammo or give them less ammo by switching weapons like that. Another thing to do is just to reinstitute special ammo in the beginning of matches. 
if people don't want to change what they're going to load out with, people are just going to maintain what they're going to do. They're going to keep using Icebreaker. They're going to keep yeah. using sidearms in the beginnings of matches to get free ammo without having to worry about ammo crates. So, overall, the change itself, the idea was good, but because of the way people were able to get around the system, the implementation of it was pretty poor. Now, let's discuss the game mode itself, Crimson Doubles. What's so special about this game mode? Well, if you didn't play it, there's a few things that are a little bit different in the way that it works. If you're familiar with Trials of Osiris, you have three players on each team, and once one player dies on the team, they need to wait for a teammate to revive them. There's no respawning. It's the same thing with Crimson Doubles, teams of two, though. So, when one player dies, your other teammate needs to revive you. The only exception is if you're a Sun Singer with Fireborn and you have your super. But other than that, there's no way to revive yourself other than waiting for a teammate. So, with that in mind, what's special about it? Well, when you're the last one standing on your team, when your teammate is dead, you get a significant buff called Broken Heart, which increases your armor, your recovery, and your agility to the max. In addition to that, your weapon handling is greatly increased. You can switch your weapons faster, your reload speed is a lot quicker as well. So, basically it turns you into some sort of uh, PvP god. Your character moves super quick, has lots of recovery in case you take damage, and you have generally a little bit more health than you normally would. So it makes for an interesting 1v2 situation. You're not explicitly punished for having a teammate go down. In fact, you get a benefit out of it. And so this really turns into some really good PvP clips, as you can see in the background here. A lot of the clips that I've had over the past week were just me going 1v2 against two other people that uh, got my teammate down initially. So, the game mode itself is very unique in Destiny. It's a very uh, competitive mode, a lot of people using loadouts that are very similar to each other, a lot of sun singers with burning grenades because that seems to be uh, a very powerful solution that people are using. A lot of people use Thorn because of the burning damage. People uh, generally like that weapon since there's no level advantages. Uh, and obviously because of the special ammo changes, we're not going to talk too much more about that again, but uh, you can see a lot of people really looking to maximize their loadout in Crimson Doubles. It was a very sweaty playlist based on the amount of reward that you could get based oh, yeah, on how you played. One was right on the so, with the game mode itself, definitely a lot of good strategies came out. Uh, the general rule was to stick with a teammate. Flanking was very sure, hard to pull see. off because if you got caught off guard, you could find yeah, yourself easily in, against, in a one against two situation, and that was not usually favorable for you. Um, another thing to keep in mind is Night Stalker seemed to be a really powerful tool. If you had Shadow Shot with Black Hole on, you could usually tether both of the other team if they stuck together really close. So, just a few things that were uh, really noticeable. Again, Thorn was very prevalent. A lot of people used Icebreaker for the ammo. We already discussed that. And so generally, it was a lot of fun, though. As annoying as it was seeing a lot of people using cheap loadouts, it was definitely very satisfying to take people out 1v2. A lot of really good experiences and memories that I had over this I'm sharing with you today with these clips. Uh, je definitely want to see this game mode again in the future. It could definitely use some improvements, though. Uh, one th change I thought would be kind of fair is uh, you would get punished for using special ammo. You know, you can't just run around all the time with special ammo in a game mode this small, especially when the other team has no way to generate it other than waiting for an ammo crate. The interview was right. We see that there was definitely a slowdown in the gratification that you got from getting a sniper kill. Often what I ended up doing was if people used Icebreaker, my teammate and I would just sit in our spawn and wait for the ammo crate to drop because that's really the only thing that could counter another sniper was waiting for yourself to get sniper ammo. So again, it was a really fun playlist, really fun and enjoyable experiences. Definitely would like to see this in rotation from now on. I'd really hate to see it go the way of Sparrow Racing and just be something that we only get for a week and then, uh, you know, go away. You know, have a couple more weeks with it. Or maybe have it like one week a month, kind of like Iron Banner. That would be really something exciting and something fresh to do in the Crucible. 
Destiny itself is really kind of low on content now, so a lot of people seem to be moving toward PvP. So the, Bungie can really take advantage of that. Help help us to enjoy PvP experiences more than we can with PvE experiences. The whole joy of having PvP is it's unpredictable. You don't know what the enemy on the other side of the TV is doing. With raids and with strikes and things like that, there's a degree of predictability upon the uh, AI that you face. But with Destiny PvP, you never know what you're going to run into. And with game modes that pull pull out unique ideas like this one, it's a really fun experience. So uh, until next time, I'm BB94 here. You can definitely watch more Destiny videos on my channel. I make lots of Destiny content. And I'm just going to let these clips play out. A lot of really good clips that I'm sure uh, you enjoy and I'm sure even some of you have for yourselves. So thanks again for watching, guys, and I'll see you again next time. I could be completely wrong. If they rush right, I have a tether, so if they pop a golden gun, then we'll be ready for it. Hopefully. Uh, oh, I got him. That was a delay. Sorry. I got in your way. Crap, he got me. Oh, but I got him. Nice, yeah. Because I got a body shot, there's no way I could have just killed him on my own. Yeah, if it, if it actually spawns, it will go away. Yeah, I also have one. They are on, like, their spawn area on left here. Ah, barely missing. Uh, I'm gonna rush him, I'm gonna rush him. Oh shoot, he saw me. Shoot. He's weak. Got him. Nice kill. That is good teamwork right there, dude. I'm gonna go left this time. The queen is in the lead. Oh, I can't believe I missed. Golden gun, I'm dead. Does his is, is his golden gun gone? I'm assuming it is. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to think what to do. You're over there. Is any on you? That you see? Okay. Okay, I figured. Okay, yeah, I see. I see. All right. Oh shoot! I'm gonna go back to what I was. Yeah, I'm gonna go back toward our spawn and approach it from like a distance and try to snipe him down. You say, and you say Golden Gun needs damage resistance, come on. Oh, that was crispy.